Okay, thanks to everyone for joining us today. Today we have Judy Paulkin with us. She's a registered dietitian and she's going to tell us more today about the art of fruit. If you check out our Zoom chat box, you'll see that we have a program survey there. If you could complete that at the end of the program because your feedback is super important and helps us improve what we offer for you. You'll also see I added a link to part of our calendar where you can view all of our upcoming nutrition and cooking programs, including some more things from Judy. And we also have a blog that has some nutrition and cooking resources. That is the final link. So since we're recording, if you have any questions throughout the program, please type them in the chat box. And I will uh, read those aloud to Judy when she's ready for questions. Thanks so much and take it away, Judy. Thank you so much, um, Devin and everyone. Um, so again, for those of you that don't know, my name is Judy Palkin and I'm speaking to you from my home in Northboro. And I really appreciate that the Worcester Public Library can bring us together like this. Um, thanks especially to Devin Evans and Jen Marion for all the hard work you do in making this happen. So this class will be about a very specific topic and that's just fruit. And can there be that much to say about fruit? There actually is, and that's because fruit is amazing, and that's a message that I hope I can leave you with at the end of this class. Um, I also want to say that you will receive an email if you're registered for that, that will have um, an image of the slides so that if anything that they say or any of the images strike you, you will have that if it's helpful to you. So let's try to advance. Okay, so the agenda, what we're gonna talk about this afternoon is I wanna cover a few, what I'm calling fruity misconceptions. So just some ideas out there that might need a little bit of clarification about fruit. And of course, fruit nutrition, why it's so good for us and why we should make a point of including fruit in our diets. And some advice that I hope will be practical as well as maybe even fun for how you can get more fruit into your life. And I'd like you to be thinking of a plan for how maybe you can do that as we're talking. And finally, throughout, from the very beginning to the very end, there will be some art um, pertaining to fruit. I always like to include paintings to a greater or lesser extent in my presentations. And with this one, it's just so very easy. Um, I think that looking at paintings sometimes helps us to see the topic in a new and different light. And some of the paintings are just so beautiful. So this is, I like to think of this as nutrition with a side of appreciation for art. And here, my, actually my first few slides have some art on them to get us going. So um, no doubt about it, fruit has inspired artists to create some of the most beautiful works of art ever. And this is a Cezanne from 1895. And I don't think anybody painted fruit like Cezanne. It's just so gorgeous and simple and appealing looking. And that's exactly what fruit is. It's all those things. My second work of art pertaining to fruit is actually a poem. Yes, there's poems with fruit. And this is called, This is Just to Say. And because it's so short, I'm gonna take the liberty of reading it to you. I have eaten the plums that were in the icebox and which you were probably saving for breakfast. Forgive me, they were delicious, so sweet and so cold. That's William, Carlos Williams from 1934. And what, I, what struck me about this is he really enjoyed those plums. He really loved them. And Edouard Manet really loved these plums. We can see that this is just gorgeous from about 1880. Um, and what I wanna know and what I want you to be thinking about is do you enjoy fruit, plums or any other fruit as much as these artists apparently enjoy them? I hope you do, or I hope you will. Here's a very different painting of fruit, um, much, much more realistic than the impressionistic style a James Peel from 1824. And what I want to point out here is this could almost be a photo. It's so realistic, but that's down to the imperfections. You can see the apples, especially the one on the table, have a lot of blemishes. And actually produce 
fruit is supposed to be that way. We as consumers, especially in America, have been taught to believe that everything should look absolutely perfect. And that's not how fruit is in nature. And so there is now, um, which is very nice, something called the ugly produce movement. And it's a way of rescuing a lot of this produce that um, sometimes is just thrown away. And it's paradoxical because we have a huge problem with food waste. So rather than have this be thrown away, it's used, but also they're trying to educate people about how this is not necessarily bad. We can cut out the bad parts if we want to. So kind of different tangential topic, but I feel like it's important. Um, and finally, um, for artwork for now, this beautiful Renoir field of banana trees from 1881. And that leads me to my first fruity misconception. Bananas are too high in calories. I've had people tell me I should not eat bananas. They're too high in calories. So let's just look at it. Um, a banana has, a medium banana has about 105 calories. But you have to look at how nutrient dense a food is. Bananas are very nutrient dense. They give us a lot of bang for the buck. So they're high in potassium, which is a very important mineral for, mu for muscle function and for the heart to be able to contract um, and for blood pressure control. They're high in vitamin B6, which is important for energy metabolism, and they're high in fiber. So yes, bananas can be included by all in our diets, and we should if we enjoy them. And I just want to mention plantains in particular. Uh, plantain is a specific type of banana. It's used more in cooking, not generally eaten raw. They're bigger, they're tougher, they're starchier. And if you haven't, you might want to try slicing up a plantain, preferably more on the riper end of the spectrum, and sauteing it on your stovetop. And, and this is a dessert. You, you throw in some brown sugar into that saute. It is absolutely delicious, easy, and it's a healthful dessert because it has fruit, which, yeah, okay, that's, um, which brings me to my next fruity misconception, which is in general, a lot of people have a perception that fruit has too much sugar, and therefore we shouldn't eat fruit or only very, very sparingly. So yes, fruit has some sugar. We're supposed to have some sugar. We need to have some carbs in our diet. Um, it's true that a lot of people, a lot of us have diets that are too high in carbs, but it's not coming from fruit. I have yet to encounter anyone who's getting way too much carbs from whole fruits. Juice, maybe. But our excess sugar in general comes from highly processed foods that we get packaged in supermarkets, as well as from restaurants and fast food establishments. Fruit has fiber. And that slows down the absorption of the sugar that's in there. And it also helps us to feel full. So fruit is kind of self-limiting. So yes, we should pay attention to portion size, especially if you have diabetes or if you know that you have pre-diabetes, like your blood sugars are running a bit high. You do need to pay attention to the portion size, but just about everybody should eat fruit. Um, just so you know, in case you are trying to be conscious of carbs, I do want you to know that there are some fruits that run along the lower end of the spectrum with carbs, berries of any kind, kiwi, melons, and grapefruits are, are, are lower carb fruits that I, are, that I am aware of. Next misconception is that apples are good for fiber, but not much else. I bring this up because I used to think it. So if I thought it, maybe you do, do too. It turns out they're quite nutrient rich. I mean, they're not brimming with vitamin C and potassium the way an orange is, but they do have antioxidants and anti-inflammatory compounds called polyphenols and phenolic acids. They have other compounds called quercetin, rutin. Um, it's not important to know the name of these. It's just important to know they're there and that apples, studies are showing that apples are associated with a reduced risk of diabetes, heart disease, certain cancers, osteoporosis. They're really good for us. 
a lot of these beneficial compounds are in the peel or right under the peel. So it's highly recommended that you eat the peel. Just of course, like any produce, wash them well before you eat them. Beautiful Matisse, vivid colors, apples on a table, green background from 1916. He was really good with fruit too. And my final fruity misconception is I have to go shopping. And these are the vegetables on my shopping list. Tomatoes, peppers, olives, avocados. I know some of you probably know what the misconception is here. These are actually all fruits. Um, botanically speaking, they're fruits. Um, even though we refer to them as vegetables, and that's fine. You know, we kind of treat them in a savory way like vegetables, but they're fruits. So I just want to define what is the fruit and what is a vegetable. A fruit has a very specific biological definition. It's the seed bearing structure of flowering plants. Um, whereas a vegetable is a much vaguer, broader definition. It's the other parts of the plants that we eat. They might be roots like a carrot or a beet. They might be leaves like spinach. They might be stems like the stem of Swiss chard. So again, it's just important that we eat them, but it's kind of fun to know. So here's a Gauguin of tomatoes and a pewter tankard from 1883. These tomatoes are beautiful fruits. Okay, so in the US, in descending order, these are the fruits that we eat the most of. Bananas, apples, strawberries, and grapes. It's possible that the apples and bananas might flip if you count like apple juice, for example. But these are all really popular, really beloved fruits, and it's good to eat them, but it's good to eat a lot of the other ones too. And we'll get to why. Fruit is just so good for us. It should be a really important part of our diet. They're very nutritious. Fruit is rich in lots of vitamins, minerals, fiber, and lots of wonderful phytochemicals. Phytochemicals are plant compounds that confer health benefits to us. They might help to prevent disease or to treat disease if we have it. So let's, I wanna talk about some specific fruits and the phytochemicals that they contain. They don't all contain the same ones. Some are higher in some, some are higher than in others. Often they have many. Um, but let's talk first about produce that's purple, blue, and red. Um, and that's a, there's a lot of them. These are some of the more common ones. Blueberries, blackberries, raspberries, strawberries, cranberries, cherries, figs, plums, and therefore prunes, dark grapes, and therefore raisins. Um, and tomatoes. So anything in, in this group is going to be high in compounds called anthocyanins. And these are good for heart health and memory. They're good for cognitive function. So we should eat lots of these. Excuse me, Judy, there are a couple of questions. Do you mind if I read those for you? Oh, I'm so happy to answer them. Thank you. <laughs> Mara is wondering if an artichoke is a fruit. Oh. I don't think so. I don't know that the seeds are in there. I do know that an artichoke is a member of the thistle family, um, but I've never encountered anything like seeds. I, I could be wrong, and I will be doing a class on vegetables in August, so try to look into it by then. <laughs> Thank you for the question. Yeah, that was a good one. We also have a question from Elaine. She says, I love the summer fruits, but have issues in the winter, just grapes and apples. What am I missing? Um, citrus. Citrus. Pom citrus, pomegranate. Um, and maybe, maybe the idea of buying frozen fruit, frozen peaches, frozen nectarines, and keeping those on hand. Berries, if you really love them, you know, keep them in the freezer and use those. But it's true, it's a different array of fruit, winter and summer, as it should be. I have to say that when I took one of your kitchen tips class, I've started having frozen blueberries in my freezer and bring down little dishes, like when I run out to let them thaw. Yeah. It's pretty fantastic. Yeah, it's a great <laughs> thing to have. And I highly recommend Trader Joe's for their frozen fruit. 
Yes. So Melody is wondering if apricots are a fruit or a vegetable. A fruit. Yeah. Fruit. They're a stone fruit, a droop, like a peach or a cherry, to the best of my knowledge. Okay. And Philomena is wondering, how well do you wash apples to make sure the peel is okay to eat? Do you use dish soap or just water? And then she says she usually peels her apples. Okay. So great question. Wash them well, uh, especially these days be because of the pandemic that we're in, but we, sh we should always wash them well. And the health guidelines, and this is what I'm doing, it, uh, are to not use soap. Use a nice scrub brush, especially for something hardy like an apple, and scrub it well under running water and then let it dry. I like to spread out a dish towel and let them dry, um, but I do try to wash them well. If it makes you comfortable and happy, you could also soak them, fill up your sink with water and let them soak and empty that water. Um, some fruits you can't scrub, you know, like things that are strawberries, like my I tried to scrub them. But yes, wash them well. And from everything I've read, the benefits of eating the peel outweigh any risk of, for example, the pesticides. Apples are commonly, in fact, always on the Dirty Dozen, which is the list of produce that tends to be higher in pesticide residues. But even then, we should eat them and just wash them well. I hope that answers the question. Okay, and that's all our questions for now. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Um, oh, okay. Um, another painting. I, I know this one's a little hard to see. It's, it's actually not your computer or anything. It's that this is a dark on dark painting, but I had to show it. As we were talking about berries and how they're rich in anthocyanins, which is I'm sure what, is not what the artist was thinking of in 1656. This is Jan, Jan Veld de I may be pronouncing that wrong. I love this painting because it's got those gorgeous, nutritious blackberries in that beautiful dish but then they are repeated in the glass of the stem of the goblet. I, don't, I hope you can see that. It's just exquisite. And I think that we have this right at the MFA in Boston. Um, and you know, it feels sad to me that we probably don't know who created that goblet, but we know who painted the painting. And again, just a reminder to eat those dark, wonderful berries. Um, strawberries, also rich in anthocyanins. This is a, a Renoir. Um, and I want to contrast how refined these strawberries are and just how elegant with the next painting, also Renoir. These strawberries look so lush. To me, they look like they're going to run off the plate, but also Renoir. And I did want to remember to mention that strawberries are very high in vitamin C. Good for skin, good for immune function. Okay, moving on to the general category of red, yellow, and orange fruits. And this is a, would include, but is not limited to, oranges, apricots, cantaloupe, peaches, nectarines, cherries, watermelon, mango, pink grapefruit, pomegranate, papaya, and again, tomato. These are rich in carotenoids, which is a group of compounds, there's hundreds of them, but they're associated with reduced inflammation and heart health and reduced risk of some cancers, in particular lung cancer and prostate cancer. So it's great to eat these on a daily basis. And I want to mention this. Um, this is so exciting to me. Recent research shows that beta carotene, which is one of the carotenoids, helps to protect the skin from UV rays. So by eating cantaloupe, by eating apricots, by eating, for that matter, carrots and sweet potatoes, um, which are not fruits, but by eating all these foods, we can actually help to protect our skin from the sun. Such great news. And here's a Gavin um, from 1896. He spent the latter part of his life painting in the South Seas. And um, so it's not surprising that he chose mangoes as a topic and mangoes would be high in those carotenoids. Do you wanna lower your cholesterol level? Or maybe you have a family member trying to lower their cholesterol level, who doesn't? 
These uh, fruits, avocados, oranges, apples, cantaloupe, grapes, bananas, cherries, plums, and probably lots of others that I'm not aware of, contain something called beta-cetosterol, and beta-cetosterol can help to lower the cholesterol level. And people that eat a lot of produce do get less heart disease. That is probably part of the reason why. And here's a gorgeous corbet of apples and pears from 1871. Look at those colors, just amazing. Okay, you've probably heard that grapes are good for heart health. And if you haven't, you're hearing it now. Grapes have a compound called resveratrol that seems to reduce the risk of heart disease. It also may help with cognitive function and the decline in memory that can occur. A lot of this resveratrol is in the skin and the seeds. So it's good to eat those. Again, wash them really well. With grapes, they're so easy to soak because they're small. I just like to put them in a bowl, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. Um, but it is good, you know, and also I know that a lot of us are buying seedless grapes. But if you do have access to the seeds and you are so inclined, they are good for you. They won't hurt you. They've got that resveratrol. Red grapes seem to have the most resveratrol, and it's not limited to grapes. They're also, it's also found in blueberries and cranberries, but grapes are particularly rich. And pomegranate. Pomegranate is a super fruit. I know it's a little bit different. You can't just sit down and eat big mouthfuls of it, um, but it's very high in antioxidants. It's got this uh, elagic acid, I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that right, which is an anti-inflammatory compound. It's high in vitamin C, it's high in potassium, and you can find very good pomegranates in the supermarkets. Um, some times of year are easier than others. And I've included instructions here for eating it if you haven't, or if you struggle with opening it. It's about cutting off the top and then scoring it. So when you open a pomegranate, you'll find what's called arils. They look like little jewels. They're little fluid-filled sacks with the juice and then a seed. It's all edible, so you can, you can actually eat the seeds, but if you prefer not to, you can just eat the juice and, and spit out the seeds, whatever you like. Just know that they're really good for you. Whoops. Ah, citrus. Humble citrus gets overlooked a lot because there's a lot more trendier fruits these days. However, citrus is one of the best in terms of health, and that would include fruits like oranges, lemons, limes, grapefruits, and mandarins. High in vitamin C, high in folic acid, which is a really important B vitamin, high in potassium, and great flavonoid compounds that are antioxidants and help reduce blood clotting. It's very easy with citrus growing that a lot of hybrids and cultivars are produced. So without going into it too much, I just wanna mention some of the terminology. In general, the little ones that are flatter on both ends and very easy to peel, um, in general, those are called mandarins. And then some specific varieties of mandarins are listed here. There's the tangerines, which are a little bit less sweet, a little bit more tart. You know if you like tangerines. There's the clementines, which are very popular because they're just so sweet and so wonderful. They're, I guess, the smallest type of mandarin. They're seedless, they peel really easily. And in the grocery store, you'll see them called things like halos, cuties, and sweeties. Those are marketing terms, um, but they're all clementines. And then there's a kind called the Satsuma Mandarin, which apparently is the easiest variety to peel. It's the most tender, but it's also the most easily damaged. So they're harder to find fresh in the stores. So reading that made me vow to myself that as soon as I see them, I'm gonna buy them. Cause not sure if I've tried them, but now I know I want to. Well, we have another question from a patron. Sure. Elaine is saying that she has heard that a number of fruits are in the dirty dozen and you should only buy organics and those of those fruits that are included in the dirty dozen. What is your opinion of buying organic? I, I agree that for the organ organic produce that you choose to buy, if you choose to do so, um, take a look at the dirty dozen clean 15 and 
choose the ones that tend to be on the dirty dozen. And in case you don't know, the Dirty Dozen Clean 15 is a list that's put out every year by a really good organization called the Environmental Working Group. They update the list every year. Um, this year, I've looked at it and the 2020 list is so similar to the 2019 list that if you've got last year's list, you're good. But what it does, the Dirty Dozen is the produce that has the most pesticide residues. The Clean 15 is the ones that have the least. So if, you know, we all know that organic produce is more expensive. So if you're going to opt for some organic produce, take a look at that dirty dozen. It always includes apples, um, I think nectarines, pepper, strawberries, several others. So I do try to choose the organic. But I do want to say that even the environmental working group who puts this list out says that if you can't afford organic or you just choose not to buy it, you're still better off eating produce than not eating it. The health benefits are that great. And just again, wash your produce really well. You'll get some of the pesticide residues off. That was a good question, I thank you. Okay, and that was all our questions for now. Thank you. Sure, okay, so moving along, more wonderful fruits. Oh, here's a Van Gogh of citrus. Um, of oranges from 1888. Very pretty. And here is a Manet of La Citrone, which is the lemon from 1880. Um, just one lemon he chose to paint. It's gorgeous. And, and I just wanted to say, where would we be without lemons? In terms of flavoring food, I mean, I don't know, maybe next to onions and garlic, what there's such a broad array of uses so even if you never sit down and eat a lemon plain which i know a lot of us don't do <laughs> um you know from from lemon meringue pie all the way to lemon chicken or just squeezing some lemon and water there's just so much that we can do with lemons to make our food taste wonderful cherries cherries seem to have some real health benefits um, they contain an alphabet soup of great phytochemicals. I won't even read the list. There's others too, but they seem to be antioxidants, anti-inflammatory, and they may help. There's some research demonstrating that they seem to help with arthritis, pain, and inflammation. Um, tart cherries do seem to have the most health benefits, more than the sweet, dark cherries, although those are good for you too. So I do want to mention, very important, if you're interested in buying frozen cherries, um, you can buy this brand, Wyman's of Maine. They sell a bag that's a mixture of dark sweet and red tart cherries. And I'm mentioning it because I don't know of any other brand that sells frozen tart cherries. And even Wyman's doesn't sell them plain. You have to get them mixed with the dark ones. Um, but these are great plain, they're great in smoothies. I've only found them in Shaw's and Market Basket. They used to have them at Walmart, but they stopped carrying them. So when I get to one of those stores, I stock up. If you've got the freezer space and you wanna do this, you buy yourself a few bags of them and then you're all set for tart cherries. Um, enjoy. Cranberries. Cranberries also have great phytochemicals. They seem, the proanthocyanidins in them, seem to help protect against urinary tract infections. That's not a myth. There's something to that. They have polyphenolic compounds that seem to help lower blood pressure. And you know we're all accustomed, I think, to cranberry sauce, but that's a very high sugar dish. You probably know that. But cranberries are great thrown into savory dishes. If you throw them into, if you're baking chicken, roasted squash, sweet potatoes, maybe a stir fry. What I like to do is keep, you can buy cranberries frozen, or you can buy them fresh and season and stash a couple bags in your freezer. So I keep the bags in the freezer. And then when I'm cooking something where they'd be good, I just toss them in. So getting the benefit of the cranberries without all the added sugar of cranberry sauce. You can also buy um, unsweetened cranberry juice. It's very, very tart because that's what cranberries are. But you know, pouring a splash of that into your water or your smoothie is a great thing to do. Let's talk for a minute about prunes. Um, prunes have real health benefits. 
It, studies have shown that they seem to help prevent or even reverse bone loss in postmenopausal women. So they may be good for preventing or treating osteoporosis. They're not exactly sure why, but it might be because they're rich in all these nutrients, uh, magnesium, vitamin K, potassium, antioxidants, and this combination might help to protect bones. So it's very interesting about prunes. Um, let's see. Back in around 2000, there was a group called the California Prune Board, and they renamed themselves to call themselves the California Dried Plum Board. They launched this massive rebranding effort where they wanted anybody selling prunes to not call them prunes anymore, but call them dried plums. And they did point out that when you have an apricot and you dry it, it's just called a dried apricot. So they said, why can't we do the same thing with prunes? But their real reason was that prunes have a very bad image. Everyone knows they have this laxative effect that you know people like, but they don't want to talk about it. And prunes are wrinkled. And so for all these reasons, prunes have become associated with the elderly. So they, they tried to rebrand them as dried plums. It seems to have been a massive failure because when I see prunes in the store and when I buy prunes, they're still called prunes. And it seems that the board is now called California Prunes. So they even changed their name back to prunes. It's funny and it's interesting and whatever, they're still really good for us. And here's a painting by Jean-Baptiste Simeon Chardin of Plums from 1765. It's also one of those hard to see ones um, because of the colors, but I think that everything in this painting looks like jewelry. It's just so gorgeous. Okay, wanna talk briefly about avocado because I know again, we think of it as a vegetable and that's fine, but it's really a fruit. Avocado is another powerhouse of nutrients. It's a rare for a fruit to be high in fat, but it is, but it's good fat. It's really healthy fat called monounsaturated fat um, that can help to lower the cholesterol level. It's got that beta-cetosterol beta in it that can help to lower the cholesterol. It's got glutathione, which is a great antioxidant. It's got folic acid, that wonderful B vitamin, potassium, vitamin E, fiber, and who knows what else. So avocados are great for guacamole, for putting in a salad, for spreading on toast. Some people just like to eat them plain. If you do that, um, just so you know, a good serving size of av avocado is recommended to be about a third of an avocado. And moving along to blueberries. I know I mentioned berries in general as being really healthy and high in anthocyanins, but blueberries just seem to be a standout. Um, they get their deep color from the anthocyanins. They really seem to decrease inflammation. They are good for cognitive health, that's brain health, and cardiovascular health. And there was a study that I wanna mention. This was just last year um, out of King's College in London. And they demonstrated that eating blueberries every day improved blood vessel function, and lowered blood pressure in healthy volunteers. And they got their blood pressure down as much as people on typical blood pressure lowering medications. So what they did is they divided the people into two random groups. Um, one group was getting 200 grams of blueberries a day, which is about a cup and a third, a not small amount of blueberries, I know. And the other group was getting like a smoothie that did not have blueberries. And it was blinded somehow. They made it so you couldn't tell which group you were in. Um, and it was, again, the blueberry group had these really good results. So I actually think if anybody has high blood pressure, this is something worth looking into and talking to your doctor about. It's just very impressive results. And more fun to eat blueberries than to take medications. But, but don't, don't do this without, don't stop your meds without <laughs> talking to your doctor about it. I also want to mention what's referred to commonly as superfruits. Um, and I know I've used that term. I used that term when I was talking about pomegranate and maybe avocado. It's a term that is commonly applied to some of these fruits that are just so nutritious and rich in wonderful compounds. Um, and it's commonly applied to the acai berry, 
the goji berry, mangosteen, and dragon fruit, as well as pomegranate. And yes, these fruits are all really, really rich in antioxidants, anti-inflammatory compounds, vitamins, and they're very good for us. What's shown here, by the way, is the dragon fruit. But it's also important to mention that you can get all these wonderful vitamins and compounds by eating other fruits like citrus fruit and berries. So you don't have to buy these. Don't don't read something about them and feel like your diet is lacking if you don't buy these because they do tend to be expensive and they can be hard to find. So, you know, if you if you can afford them, if they're in your budget and you want to order them or or buy them from Whole Foods or whatever, have fun, but you don't have to. And this Matisse with these vivid, beautiful colors from 1901, just to remind us that by eating deeply colored produce like dark fruits, we are getting all these wonderful phytochemicals. So now I just wanted to um, ask you a couple questions and also see if you have any other questions for me before I move on to some fruit advice. Um, some practicality. Eating fruit an enjoyable part of your life. And if it is, maybe can you share a, a quick tip on how we can better enjoy fruit? And if you'd like to do that, feel free to type it into the chat box. Okay, everyone, let's hear about how you enjoy fruit. I have a question, Judy. Sure. I was wondering if canned fruit has any nutritional value. Sure it does. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's never going to be quite the same as fresh fruit, but canned fruit, thing, fruit, foods when they're canned, if they're canned properly, retain their nutritional value. I mean, the thing about most canned fruits is that they're canned either with a lot of sugar or at the very least or best canned with fruit juice. So to, you know, to get rid of some of that extra sugar, you might want to drain that off. But there's a time and a place for canned fruit. Um, for example, uh, canned uh, mandarin oranges, you know, mm -hmm. segments are, are delicious on a salad. So yeah. Okay, good to hear. Uh, we do have a comment here from Philomena. She has a question. She said, are there fruits especially low in sugar for someone who has prediabetes? Yeah, back to that other slide, and I, I, you know, I, I hope I didn't rush through it, but I'm happy to say berries, uh, all kinds of berries are lower in calories. Kiwi fruit, which to me tastes like a giant berry. It tastes very similar to a berry. Grapefruit and melon, melon of every kind that I know of. Um, and I know people are thinking watermelon, watermelon's lower in carbs. It actually is if you just adhere to like a, a nice, slice, like a, a, a nice generous slice of watermelon. You can't sit down and eat half the watermelon and think it's going to be low in sugar, but me again, melons, berries, kiwi, and grapefruit are the lowest sugar ones that I'm aware of. Okay, and Mara is sharing a tip. She says that she keeps blueberries next to her keyboard at work instead of chips or cookies. Fantastic idea. That is Fantastic. nice. Yeah. And Melody is wondering what nutritional value pineapples have. Hmm. You know, I honestly, I'm not aware of anything particular that they're high in. Um, so I'm not sure. Um, I apologize for that. I know I'm going to look into that for myself, um, but I, I'm not aware that they're particularly high in any one nutrient. I could be wrong. It's happened a lot. <laughs> okay, and we have a tip from Elaine. She says she loves the tip on frozen fruit, especially in the winter. Her tip is that when she's a bit hungry, instead of a candy bar, she reaches for fruit like blueberries. Yeah, yeah. Blueberries are really popular. Mary is saying that she keeps frozen blueberries in her freezer all year round. Blueberries are popular. I'm, I'm really glad to hear that. Grace says that she loves fruit. One thing she's found is that uh, she, for smoothies, she prefers pre-freezing cut up bananas. Yes, 
And I'm going to talk about that. I'm so glad to hear that. I, I am going to say something about kind of frozen bananas. They're really special. Olivia says that she enjoys putting mixed berries in her smoothies and it's delicious. Yes. Frozen, the bag you buy of the mixed berries. Veronica says she loves a mixed fruit salad with yogurt. Yep. And then Mara says, have you tried a Cosmic Crisp Apple? It's the latest and greatest from Washington State. I have not. I will look for it. Philomena is asking, do you or anyone know of a basic smoothie recipe for using fruit? Oh, I certainly have some. Um, if it's possible, when I send you the the slides, Devin, I could send a smoothie recipe or two with it. That would be fantastic. And let me just say regarding the, the recipe that I send and any smoothie recipes, you can alter them to your taste. So you can change the type of berries. If there's berries in it, you can make it thinner or thicker depending on how much liquid you add. Um, so smoothies are definitely adaptable and it's a great way to use fruit. Yeah. Philomena says, terrific, thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Philomena. I appreciate that. And I think that's everyone on uh, the fruit. I already mentioned I keep blueberries in my freezer now, thanks to Judy. And that's really up to my fruit content. I know I'm at least gonna have the blueberries in the morning with my breakfast, and sometimes I have a banana in the afternoon. That's awesome, that's really good. Okay, well, let me move on because what I want to get to now is less about the nutritional information. I think we've, we've covered a lot of that. I want to talk about some practicalities for how you, if you feel you're not eating enough fruit, even though you like it, or you're just not sure what more you can do with fruit, I want to give you a few basic practical suggestions. So um, wash fruit when you get it home. And now this doesn't apply to something very fragile. Some fruits go bad quickly, like strawberries, raspberries, even peaches sometimes. So you might not wanna wash those till you're going to eat them so they stay fresher that little bit, bit longer. But fruits that are hardy, like apples, pears, citrus, and yes, we should wash our fruit, even the fruits where we don't eat the rind. Yeah, um, but wash it when you get it home and then you have it all set to eat and that, that takes away an impediment if it was an impediment. Okay. We just got a question from Mary. She's wondering if it's better to eat whole fruit rather than having a fruit smoothie. Well, if, yeah, for some people. So eating whole fruit is probably gonna take longer. There's more chewing involved. So if you, have high blood sugars for any reason, if you're pre-diabetic or diabetic and things are not so well controlled, you might be better off having the whole fruit. Or you can be sure to make your smoothie so it's only got maybe one serving of fruit in it. Maybe like one, you know, like one orange or, <clears throat> excuse me, a half a cup to a cup of chopped fruit or berries. Um, but for most people, it is okay to have some smoothies. Just don't make them in too enormous. Get in one to, you know, like a serving of fruit into your smoothie. I hope that's helpful. And that's our only question for now. Thank you. <clears throat> sure. Next bit of fruit advice. It's nice to create a fruit salad using whatever fruit you have on hand. Sometimes fruit seems like it's going to not last too much longer. And you might be surprised to find that whatever fruit, fruit you have on hand goes well together with each other. They all like each other. Why am I struggling to do this? Okay, um, this is highly specific, but if you happen to be creating a fruit platter, like when we get back to having company or going to someone's house, a really elegant and I thought unusual way to do it is to make a platter with fresh and dried fruit combined. Somebody brought me one of these and I just thought it was the most beautiful thing I ever saw. If you are a cere cereal eater in the morning, you can top your cereal hot or cold with fresh berries, a banana, a sliced nectarine. Um, it just really enhances cereal. If you are having fruit for a snack, 
um, it's really nice to pair it, nice nutritionally, to pair it with a good protein source. So for example, blueberries or any kind of fruit with yogurt or peaches and cottage cheese, or even maybe some melon slices with some slices of turkey or chicken and grapes and peanuts. Grapes and peanuts will be kind of reminiscent of a PB and J. It's kind of a fun one. Some fruit is very portable just due to the rind on it. And it's just so easy to bring with you if you're going somewhere. And if you have a busy day, it might make the difference between you getting fruit or not. So fruits like this would include apples, pears, clementines, and bananas. Just throw it in your bag. Um, definitely experiment with fruit in savory dishes. So uh, chicken, for example, is so delicious baked with apricots and or prunes. Um, fish with mango, pineapple and a stir fry, salsa with mango or pineapple, um, and fall vegetables baked with apples. So for example, butternut squash baked with some apple pieces. Really, really delicious. So it doesn't, fruit doesn't always have to be like a desserty kind of thing. Fruit is definitely delicious in a tossed salad. A tossed salad is usually mostly vegetables, but can really some sweet tops of fruit. I like raisins, raspberries, blueberries, and chunks of pear in a salad. And you might have your own that you like. Garnish with fruit. Um, whatever you're putting out, and, and you know, could be cheese and crackers, could be a big entree, but garnish with fruit, it adds beauty and it adds a pop of health. Um, have fruit for dessert. Um, it can run the gamut from fresh and dried fruit. And, uh, and believe me, I know we're not going to do this every time for dessert. I'm fully aware of that and I agree, <laughs> but maybe sometimes we can do that. Dried fruit is especially sweet. Like if you haven't had a sweet for a little while and then you eat some dates or raisins, you'll see how sweet it is. Fruit with yogurt, some people do find that to be a very acceptable dessert, especially if you drizzle some honey or maple syrup on it. Something like applesauce, which is fun to make. Um, a baked apple, also fun to make. All the way to a fruit pie or a crisp. These are all just ways to get fruit in for dessert. Um, if you are making muffins or pancakes, toss in some berries or apple chunks. This is where those frozen blueberries, or this is another place where they really come in handy. And by the way, homemade muffins are so much better for us than any muffins that we buy out. We can use whole wheat flour, we can add bran, flax seeds, anything we want, including fruit. And here we get to the freezing fruit for smoothies. So if you have extra fruit and it's really on its way out, don't waste, don't throw it away. Cut it up if it needs cutting up and freeze it and it will be delicious in smoothies. Or if you're not a smoothie person, you might find another use for it, like baking it with chicken or putting it into a bread or something. Um, but freeze that extra fruit. Frozen bananas are absolutely amazing in smoothies. If you blend frozen banana slices with um, any kind of milk. So I like to do this with soy milk. It could also be almond milk or flax milk or just regular milk for that matter. And you put in cocoa powder, um, as in like just baking cocoa, you'll get um, a chocolate, it's like a chocolate shake. If your blender is not extremely powerful, you might want to let the frozen banana sit there for a few minutes in the milk and soften up because frozen bananas get very, very hard and it takes a strong blender to blend them right out of the freezer. So you might let them sit for a few minutes, then you blend them with your cocoa powder and you have a chocolate shake. It's also really good to throw peanuts in there or peanut butter, then you've got chocolate peanut butter. Um, and sometimes people ask, do I freeze the whole banana? Do I cut it up? You really need to cut it up. You cut it up and freeze the slices because I don't know any blender that's gonna tackle a whole frozen banana. Frozen fruit by itself can make a great snack, just right out of the freezer. And it sounds like some of you have discovered this. 
Um, it's, it's almost like candy. It's sweet and it's hard and you know, it, it, can, it can be a fun snack. Personally, what I really enjoy is frozen grapes, frozen cherries, and frozen clementine segments. How did I find out about the clementine segments? What happens is I buy a lot of clementines and they don't keep forever. And there comes a day, a few days into them when I say, you know, the clementines are on their way out. They've got another day, but I've got like five or six of them. So I quickly peel them, freeze the segments, and they're great. They're just great frozen orange smoothies. And finally, try something different. So, you know, we all know about bananas and apples. Maybe you haven't had papaya in a long time or ever. Um, how about kumquats? Those are little citrus fruits. They're tiny, like they can be the size of grapes and you can eat the peel. The entire peel is edible. They're wonderful. Maybe fresh figs. And especially carambola, which is the star fruit. It's called that because when you slice it crosswise, you get these star shapes. They're nutritious and they're very, very pretty, like in a fruit salad or on yogurt or in a stir fry or as a garnish for fish. And this last bit of advice I haven't tried yet, but I'd like to, it just sounds really neat, um, baking them into a cake. And um, final bit of fruit advice, put fruit out, if you haven't already, put fruit out in a bowl or a pretty plate on your counter or your kitchen table. So there's a couple reasons to do that. Um, first of all, if you feel you're not eating enough fruit, if it's there, you'll see it and you'll be inclined to go for it, or you know, maybe instead of something else like crackers or something else that you might be reaching for. Um, but the other reason is it's just so beautiful, like the Cezanne um, from around 1885, just so beautiful. There's a reason all these artists painted so much fruit. It's gorgeous. So um, I wanted to say that none of us can afford our own Cezanne <laughs> to hang in our kitchen, but we can all, for just a little bit of fruit, create our own that's just as beautiful. We have a couple comments. Olivia says that she makes chocolate peanut butter banana smoothies all the time and Dot said that she does too. I'm so glad to hear that. <laughs> Anyone who has any more questions or comments, please feel free to type those in. Our session would... has a, a few more minutes. Okay, and I just have a, a couple more comments. Oh, sorry. It's really reaching the end. Um, just a couple sayings actually. In the US, we have an expression, life is just a bowl of cherries. And why not? Because again, those cherries are so good for us. And this refers to when things are really pleasant and things are going really well for us. That's something that people might say. And, oh, oh, here's a painting, a Gauguin um, from 1889. This is actually, I think I showed this in the last class. This is at the Fog Art Museum. Gorgeous, gorgeous peaches. Um, so in France, they say, avoir la pêche. It's a common expression in, in France. Literally, it means to have the peach, but what they mean when they say it is that you're feeling um, in the peak of health, mentally, physically, maybe both. So th you're just feeling great, avoir la pêche. And fruit can do that for us, or it can help. So now I want to know, I want you to um, come up with your plan. And by plan, I mean just a simple goal um, that you would like to set right now regarding fruit. If you don't think you're eating enough fruit currently, should you eat more fruit? And how might you do that? What's one way that you might do that? Or maybe you are eating a lot of fruit, but you're eating the same thing over and over. Should you eat different fruits? Do you want to try some different ways of fruit? Maybe a smoothie, maybe savory fruit. So if people have, um, you can keep this to yourself or if you'd like to share a goal with us, I'm sure we'd all love to hear it. So if you want to type that in the chat box, go right ahead. We did get a thank you so much from Olivia. Mara says, another reason to have fruit out is that the flavors can be more intense at room temperature. 
Good point. Yeah. Thank you for that. Elaine says that she does eat a lot of fruit, but never thought of slicing a nectarine on her cold cereal. Oh, and the box jumped up. Um, she said she, that's, that's yummy. Yeah. We're coming to the right time of year for that too. So mm -hmm. give it a try. Alexandra says, excellent presentation. Thank you so much to you and the library. Thanks for joining us, Alexandra. Yeah, thank you. Veronica says, thank you, Judy. I love your classes and learn so much each time. I will second that. Thank you, I appreciate that. Philomena says she's going to explore fruit, uh, frozen fruit, and she also tends to buy the same old fruit. She's, she's going to try some others. Very good, very good. Mary asks, can you eat too much fruit? Um, she really loves lots of varieties. So it would be hard to eat too much fruit because again, it's got so much fiber it's, and, and fluid and water in it, it becomes self-limiting. It's possible, it certainly is possible. I don't wanna say you couldn't eat too much fruit, but it probably wouldn't be likely. And I think you'd begin to realize if you pay attention to how you feel, how your, how your stomach feels, um, if you're feeling distended, then you might say, oh, I've had too much. But in general, fruit is not the thing that people eat too much of in our culture. Most people, over half of us, don't eat enough fruit. Okay, Philomena says, this was so helpful. Thank you so much. Elaine says, thanks, Judy, uh, as always. Dot says, thank you. I will bring fruit in the car to snack on. Olivia says she'll bring fruit to work. And Mara says, thank you. Interesting facts and great communication style. Also, she loves our library Instagram account. Thank you, Mara. <laughs> and Dot says, have you ever heard of cotton candy grapes? Oh, yes. Dot said that? Yeah. I haven't had them. I've heard of, I've seen them in Wegmans and I keep meaning to try them, um, and I haven't. I don't know if anyone else has tried them, if you have, Dot. I've personally never heard of them. That's new for me. Mary says, thank you, Judy. Mara says the cotton candy grapes are super sweet. I guess, you know, I guess that's not surprising given the name. It's, it's some, <laughs> high, some cultivar they came up with, and I would love to try them. I, I appreciate that reminder about them. Um, I really appreciate all these comments. Yeah, Dot says her son told me about, or told her about those grapes, and Melody says, very informative presentation, thank you. So everyone, before you log off, please don't forget to scroll up to the top of your uh, chat box. There is a survey link there for your feedback for this program. If you enjoyed it, please let us know. It helps us make um, decisions and bring in great programmers like Judy. There's also a link for more sessions from Judy. It's our whole calendar for the summer for food and nutrition. And the third and final link it relates to more food and nutrition resources. Uh, it should be up at the top, top of your chat box, Melody. If you don't see it, I can post them in. If someone else could um, let me know if they're still not there. Oh, shoot. Okay, just give me a second. This is a great time to ask more questions of Judy. <laughs> and you know I'm gonna zip over if you don't mind and see if I can uh, it's bugging me about the pineapple <laughs> um, if you'll bear with me I want to see if pineapple is high in anything in particular that I can come up with Checking a reputable site, please. Oh, it's, can, can you hear me? Yep. Pineapple's got a good amount of vitamin C. That's really good. And it's got some copper, some thiamine, which is a B vitamin, vitamin B6, manganese, which is an important mineral. So I, I can't remember who asked that question about the pineapple, um, but I'm so glad it got asked because it, it's looking like pineapple is more nutrient rich than I ever thought. So you know what? 
I need to add a slide about it for whenever I do this again. I really appreciate that question. I'll look more into it and verify all this, but yay, pineapple, go pineapple. And I'll show you this last painting while, while um, we're waiting for the link. This is a, this is a James Peel. A, we, there was another James Peel. He, he was the one with the imperfect blemished fruit in the beginning. So what I love about this one, aside from the grapes just look luminescent, is it's right at the Worcester Art Museum. So, wow. <laughs> I don't know if we can get back in there yet, but there it is. Beautiful painting. Okay, I pasted in those three links. Thanks to everyone for letting me know about that. I'm glad to hear pineapple is good for you as well because I love pineapple on my pizza. Oh yeah, pineapple is good on like a chicken with chicken, right? On a pizza or peppers. I usually just do tomatoes and pineapple and live it up. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. And you know, you could keep canned pineapple at home. Mm -hmm. you know, in the event that a pizza showed up without pineapple, <laughs> <laughs> could happen. Okay, unless there's any more questions, we have passed up um, 3.30 just a little bit. Thank you for joining us, Mara. Oh, Melody says that they buy and make pineapple pizza and she puts raisins in her omelets. That's one I hadn't heard of. Whoa, did you say raisins and omelets? Yeah. Wow, that's really interesting. Thank you for that. I'll try that. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I, I really appreciate everyone's attention. Great suggestions. Um, one of the classes coming up will be similar to this, but vegetables instead of fruit. So um, we have a lot more to talk about. Yeah, and in that second link, the calendar link, you'll see information for Judy's upcoming vegetable class and you can register through there as well. Thank you, Devin. Great job, really. Thank you, Judy. I learned so much. Thank you. I'll close the, um, I'll close the slideshow. Okay, yeah, unless there's anything else, we will go ahead and log off. Okay, and thank you, Devin. I'll send you that information for, for you to forward to everybody who might happen to want it. Yeah, we'll be sending out an email to all participants with Judy's slides, as well as some smoothie recipes. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Have a good weekend, everybody. Thank you.